Bonjour, this is Maverick Sebor, and, uh, <laughs> and this is Terra Recommended. I've been down there standing in for time. I want you to know that. I'm sorry that I never made you cry. I've grown just a total. Yeah, we change, let's be honest. Right, so the first selection today um, is, for me, um, Liam Bailey is one of the best, purest voices that I've ever heard. And not just because he's a, he's a good friend of mine and has been for a, a number of years, but just in general, he's like, you know, I've heard the man sing not warming up at all, might have been on a night, a mad night out or a couple of nights out <laughs> in the nights before and still come on and sound as pure and as raw and as just straight to the heart as, 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 as I've ever heard any, any kind of singer. The only other singers that I've heard that have kind of matched up to him have been legends, you know, um, and he, he definitely comes into that category. And this record, we were just chatting earlier on about how much they put out El Michel's Affair, you know, like three records a year or something we were guessing. Um, and it's just a beautiful, it's beautiful blend of, the, of, 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 of both. It's got Black Thought, Lee Scratch Perry on it. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a really sonically uh, wicked record to listen to, so yeah. Um, the second record um, I've picked up is a record that I haven't actually heard um, in full, um, which is why I picked it up. But it's by an artist that I've got a massive amount of respect for, and it's Nubia Garcia. If you haven't heard her, please check her out. Um, probably have heard of her. Um, and she's just a, a, a brilliant, captivating musician. If you've ever heard any of her music or seen her live, she, you know, she sings with her instrument. Um, you know, very few players over the years are able to, I'm a vocalist, so I love singers, but very few players over the years are able to sing through their instruments in a sense, if you know, carry the emotion. And everything I've ever heard from any of our live sessions to any of our shows or any of the music I've ever heard has always carried that same amount of emotion in it, which again is, rare, is, is a rare thing to have. So Nubia Garcia, so awesome move. And we move, sorry. The next one is just a little bit of a shame, uh, shameless plug because I've worked with Niall Rogers uh, a bit in the last, in, in you know, in, in the recent kind of year or two, um, and he's actually done some guitar work on the last song on my album, a song called Get Down, uh, which is kind of like a funk, a wonky, funky record. It was originally like a four to the floor kind of dance tune um, that we ended up kind of taken down a bit more of an organic route and uh, ended up being a kind of like wonky funk tune. Um, and Niall Rogers has always been a big inspiration as well. Just, you know, it's the king of groove, but also, you know, the king of catchy, simple, powerful songs that, you know, kind of never leave for generations and seem, he seems to always, he seems to always find relevance in new generations, which is rare. And, and working with him is kind of like working with two artists. One of them's a legend that everything that comes out of their mouth is like stories about, you know, Luther Vandross when he was younger and just everything's magic, you know. Uh, all the stories are inspiring, but at the same time, he comes into a room like a young musician, uh, which again is a rare thing to find that, that musicians, you know, I know musicians who've been in the game for five years and they don't have the same amount of passion, you know, so to hold on to that is unique and Sheik and Niall Rogers created, you know, some of the greatest songs of all time in my opinion, definitely some of the greatest grooves and, and, and memorable feels of all time, so for any songwriters, I think Sheik and uh, yeah, Niall Rogers is a, is a must, is a must, so yeah.
Uh, the reason I picked up this record, I don't actually know this artist and I don't know this record and I went to it because it was in the Irish independent um, category. Independent music is always something that should be supported, especially when it's homegrown into independent music, which is why I went over there to just kind of randomly pick something. And I randomly picked it because every now and then I go uh, record shopping and I buy stuff just on the cover alone. Just every now and then, just like a lucky dip, you know. Some can be absolutely horrible and it's, they're just lovely to look at. But, um, but yeah, I picked this up because I, I just loved the, 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 the artwork at the front. I love the photo and his choice of font uh, <laughs> at the back, um, which is just stuff that wins me over. So uh, hopefully the, the record sounds good as well, which I'm sure it will. Um, but yeah, it's far Caspian and ways to get out. Lovely choice of colour and font on the front as well. So, yeah, aesthetically, it's won me over and it's Irish music and it's independent. So, when you can put together something um, tasteful like this and you're independent, I think we've got to, got to reach out and support as much as we can. So. The last one is a, is a, um, is a, is one just because I have a story about it, to be honest. Um, and it's, it's Jeff Wayne's The War of the Worlds, the musical version, which was um, a record I think originally came out in the 70s, uh, 70s, early 80s maybe. I could be, you know, War of the Worlds fans are probably like, he's not a fan of this. Why I picked this record out is because in between my first album and second album, I got asked to come out to Jeff Wayne's house in the countryside um, with the idea that I would be part of this record, the new version of it, um, which was strange, I, you know, because I'd never heard the original record. To be honest, I didn't even know it existed as an album. I'd heard of the movie, obviously the original story, um, but I didn't know they put it into an album. And I remember, I think I told my dad or something like that, and he was like, yeah, Phil Linnett was da 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 da. And I was, you know, I'm a big Tin Lizzy Phil Linnett fan, so anything to kind of get a bit closer to anything that he might have edged, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely come out. Um, and I came out to Jeff Wayne's house, I think it was for two days. And he lives in a really nice house out in the countryside, maybe, you know, a couple of hours outside of London. And I got to hear all of Phil Linnett's outtakes and all the raw vocals, which was really interesting and beautiful. Um, that I got to hear like a little, bit of, a little bit of his history that I don't know how many people have heard. Um, and then I ended up making the final cut of the new version, which, you know, I'm not really a theatrical person and... Uh, you know, it was it was a stretch out of my comfort zone. So the diehard fans of this, I've had mixed reviews. I've met people in, you know, Lincoln Sainsbury's that have come up to me slowly and been like, I'm a fan of War of the Worlds and I thought you did a really nice job. But said it to me like really quietly and eerily. And then I've had people come up to me like, geez, I think you absolutely murdered that uh, War of the Worlds. So I've had a mixed bag, but you know, I'm not into my theatrics necessarily and it was more for the, for the experience. So if you ever hear it, don't judge the rest of my music on my performance of that, you know. I was trying to, uh, I was trying to match the great Phil Linnett, but he did a far better job than I did. Um, but it's always something I've got fond memories of. So if you ever get a chance, I think this is the original version. Phil definitely did a better job. Uh, but yeah, take take a listen. And if you want to venture out, take a listen to the new one. But again, that's that's uh, you know, don't judge too hard. Once there was a time when I believed without hesitation that the power of love and truth could conquer all in the name of salvation. Tell me what kind of world is. I've been Maverick Saber. Thank you for watching. Tell is recommended, and don't forget to look up.